So I mentioned earlier that we want a full length arrow shaft. Okay, so why is that important? Well, in our typical deer hunting or target shooting setup, most of the time we want an arrow that when we're back at full draw, comes to stop somewhere in the arrow shelf region of our bow. Okay, well, obviously the biggest problem here with the Magnus bullhead or any head chopping type of broadhead is its size. And if you come back to full draw on a short arrow, okay, what can happen is those blades can smack that arrow shelf right there. Okay, so it's very important. Another thing that you want to watch out for is your sight relationship to the broadhead itself. Okay, now this bow I have set up so that sight clearance is no issue. Okay, so no matter where when I'm at, in here at full draw, my blades are, I don't have any interference with my sight. Now, depending on how you set your bow up, the way you anchor, uh, different products you might use as far as a bow and sight combination, sometimes there can be a clearance issue, okay? I'm just gonna shift this for extreme purposes, okay? But if you have one where you've got tight clearances there, when you go to shoot or come to full draw, Okay, it can hit that sight when that uh, sight ring. Okay, where's that really a problem? Let's say you got a drop away rest. Okay, and a draw it comes back, the rest comes up, and it smacks it when you go to shoot. Okay, so it's very important that you pay attention to your bow setup so that your blade orientation either misses the sight ring or you have your sight ring set high enough and your anchor point adjusted and all your shooting gear adjusted so that no matter what the position, you're not going to get any interference whatsoever. Okay, just something to look out for. Okay, so to further show why that's all important, I now have my arrow knocked. I actually have my blades aligned so that if I had a sight interference, there would be no interference. So you can see when I come to full draw, okay, you can see where we're in relationship to everything that my broadhead is at in relationship to the riser and the sight. Okay, it's way out in front of the riser, it's out in front of my fingers, there's nothing that can get hit. You can also see an orientation, okay, what the blades are to the sight ring itself. Now again, on my setup, I don't have any sight ring clearance issues, but you want to always pay attention to your bow setup and where those big blades line up in relationship to your sight. Okay, so we've gone over the arrow that we need, uh, where we need things as far as uh, our alignment with our sight and everything to make sure we're clear. All right, let's talk a little bit about tuning. All right, you need to tune your bow and tune your bow very well. What do I mean by that? I'm talking about making sure in the instance of say, a double cam bow like this, okay, that everything's in sync, that the timing is right. On a solo cam bow, uh, bow, that the timing on the bottom cam is right. Everything needs to be set up right on your bow. Your rest needs to be set properly, both up and down, right to left, because you want to launch that arrow in as straight of a fashion as possible. Again, we got some giant wings out on the front. We've got a very stiff arrow if we're using the right one. We got some good feathers on the back end to steer it, okay? But we have big wings. And if that arrow is not leaving the bow properly, okay, then the wings are gonna misdirect your shot, okay? It doesn't work magic, all right? Things are very forgiving when it comes to a field tip on an arrow. All right, on a field tip, you don't have the wing out front. Okay, expandable broad heads, you don't have the wing out front. Okay, uh, deer broad heads with a smaller cut diameter, you don't have as big a wing, so the steering is not as critical. Your tune is very critical when shooting bull heads because of that giant wing out front. Okay, now we're not going to go into how to tune a bow. Okay, there are many videos on YouTube. I've done some. Other people who know far more about bow tuning than I do have done some. You can follow the Easton Tuning Guide, okay? But here's what you need to know, is you need to set your bow up, okay? If you can't do it, find a professional who can. Set it up right, paper tune it, walk back tune it, which personally I think is a far better uh, way to tune a bow than, say, paper tuning, okay? 
get it so your field tips are flying, get it so your deer broadheads are flying, and finally get it so that your bullheads are flying. Use the same arrow the whole time. If you change out arrows, it does no good. If you go to your, from your deer hunting arrow to the full length shaft, you just did yourself a disservice, okay? Now here's the thing with bullheads. Very, very minute rest adjustments or knock point adjustments have major effects on the way the bullhead flies, okay? Again, it's less forgiving because of the big wing out front. So I'm talking on most rests you've got little, you got little marks. Sometimes the width of that mark can change that bullhead flight two inches, okay? So you're shooting and you're shooting two inches right and you're getting frustrated because your field points are on. Sometimes a width of that little mark line to the left will pull your broadhead in, or your bullhead in but it's not even going to affect your field point, okay? I have never come across a bow that I could not make a bullhead fly out of, okay? All right? They all can be tuned. Now, there are tricks to it in those adjustments. Also, you got to remember, too, you've got that big broadhead out there. The faster the arrow is flying, the more critical the tune is, okay? The faster the arrow is flying, the easier it is for any small tuning issue to send that arrow off course, all right? Why is that really an issue? Well, here's the deal. Most of us have our whitetail setups at 70 pounds, 29, 30 inches draw, trying to shoot an arrow at over 300 foot per second. You don't need it to kill a turkey. I have seen a 30 pound youth bow cut a turkey's head, not off, but severe enough that it bled out real quick and died, okay? You don't need it. This bow right here is set up at about 55 pounds, 29 inch draw. I've never chronoed it, so I can't tell you how fast it's shooting, but it's not all that fast. And I have taken turkey's heads completely off. You don't need the speed, okay? So the first thing I tell guys is if they've gone through the whole tuning process and they're still struggling a little bit, I say, hey, what poundage are you shooting? They go, 70 pounds. Say, Turn that bow back to 60 pounds. Try it. You will be surprised at what a few foot per second speed off that arrow does for your arrow flight if you're struggling with your tune, okay? So tune forms another thing. Your shooting form's gotta be spot on, all right? So make your, for, your setup as forgiving as possible for yourself, all right? By cranking the poundage down if you have to, spend the time to tune your bow. This is not something that you get ready to go hunt and you take your, bra your bullheads out two days before you're going to go turkey hunting, slap them on and say, let's go. Get out there a few weeks beforehand, all right? Get your bow set up, spend time with it, go through it. Tune it one day, put it away, pick it up the next day or two days later and go through it again, okay? I don't make critical major adjustments all in one tuning session. I'll put my bow away and I'll come back the next day because as I shoot more and more, my form breaks down as I get tired. Okay, it's been a long winter, we're going into turkey season, and I'm, I haven't pulled the bow back a lot, for example. Okay, my form breaks down. All right, so take your time, go out in advance, and get things set up. Okay, and then you too can have a bow and be confident in it and confident in the, in the product when it comes time to shoot that turkey. Okay, and that's what we all want. We all want to be confident for that time when that turkey comes in and everything's on the line and it's everything that you've been working for we want confidence okay i've yet to find a bow that i cannot make a bullhead fly out of so probably the number one question that we get is how do i practice with my magnus broadheads okay the easiest way to practice is go to your local dollar store your walmart whatever and buy a cheap poly filled pillow okay now this is a cheap poly filled pillow that i bought probably five years ago and i've been shooting bullheads for a number of years and i think i've gone through about three pillows total and since i learned a little trick i don't go through them at all anymore so this one's probably five years old it's got a cheap pillow case on it i think i've got a grand total of about six bucks invested in this setup right here all right so why a pillow well what happens is you got all this surface area on these blades 
And when they when this arrow comes flying in here, there's a lot of energy to uh, get rid of. If you take a pillow and you free hang it, I've got this on the stand, I've seen guys hanging from clotheslines, from limbs of trees, whatever. The important thing is you want a pillow that's able to swing, okay? And what happens, that arrow comes in, you got a big soft mass there, it absorbs all the energy from that arrow and basically swings back and the arrow will typically get stuck inside the pillow, okay, or bounce off and fall to the ground, but usually sticks inside the pillow. Now this is an old pillow, like I said, and here's how you can make your whopping $6 investment last. Go and get yourself some simple packing tape. Okay, you can buy it in disposable dispensers for a few bucks. This is one from my office, an extra one that I have. It's a dispenser. It's just clear packing tape. Super cheap. This roll will last me shooting targets with bullheads for a couple of years. All right, so as I shoot it and I eat this pillow up, which you can see it has been, I just take clear pack. Uh, packing tape and I take myself strips and I just tape it right back up and I'll wrap it I'll do whatever it takes just to put it together and I can get in three four five shots on that packing tape wrap it again and keep on shooting okay give yourself a tart a dot to to uh, shoot at but that's all you need okay don't use a layered type of target like say a block or a black hole or any other of the manufacturers out there they will stop a bullhead, okay? But it does two things. One, induces a lot of pressure on these blades because there's nothing there to absorb the energy. And two, those targets are expensive. This is six bucks. Those might be 60 bucks or more for those targets, okay? And those big blades are going to eat that target alive, okay? So protect your investment. Don't shoot it into a layered target. Uh, you're gonna protect the head. You're gonna protect your wallet a lot longer. This is a lot less expensive, a lot easier. Um, it just all around works a lot better, okay? And definitely don't use a bag target, don't use a hard foam target or whatever. You'll destroy targets, you're gonna destroy blades, possibly arrows. You need something that takes that energy away and that's what this does. Every time you hit it, that's what that does, okay?